You're listening to WGSN DB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. Welcome to Hip and Humble. I- <laughs> I'm Mom, and this is my son, Aram. Yeah. Thank you very and, much. Yeah. And uh, we just wanted to introduce you to our podcast. We talk about all things antique and collectible. We want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we also want to thank WGSNDB, Going Solo Network, for putting us on. We also want to thank our other sponsors, sponsors Hip and Humble, LLC. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm messing Aram up. Aram hasn't even had Benadryl. And I'm messing up. You guys up. are in for a ride. It's going to be fun. Hip it and is. Humble Antiques LLC. That's our sponsor. That's it. Yep. And That's we got us. two stores. We got one in Bethany, Oklahoma at Rink Gallery, and the other is in downtown Fredericksburg, Virginia at Oldies But Goodies right there on Caroline Street. And for those of you that are not all about driving, make sure and check out our Etsy store. That's Hip and Humble Antiques on Etsy. And if we don't have anything that tickles your fancy at the moment, I promise we will soon. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have been excited every time we've talked about this topic. That's true. You know what? You can not not be excited about toys. Yeah, that's... uh... I mean, when you think of playing with toys, everybody immediately relaxes. They think about all their favorite things. Well, it's nostalgic. It's just... It just makes you happy. It makes you happy. It makes you think of you're thinking of a simpler time. You know, a wonderful writer on the Museum of Toys website wrote, "Toys reflect the times that they were made in," and I think that is an absolutely wonderful statement. And its truth is both profound and enlightening. We've been talking about toys for a few episodes now, and that's because they truly are an incredible reflection of the culture. Well, they are, and you know, like I was reading. Some of the older toys get replaced by newer versions or newer toys as Mm -hmm. times change. But there are a few of those toys that don't change. Yeah. I mean, toys can inspire both imagination and nostalgia. Older toys are an amazing catalyst towards bringing together generations. Everyone who played with toys as a child understands its significance, right, in their own lives. And that's incredibly relatable. Absolutely. I remember I remember finding lawn darts in my Nana's closet, and we had so much fun playing with those. And that experience is obviously one that you and I share in, in a similar well, time. Uh, th- that that is lives. true, but just, just for a record, lawn darts are illegal because they have the sharp points on the end. Yeah, well. So as I'd kids like everyone to anymore. know that all my sons have their eyeballs and limbs and no gaping holes of any sorts from the lawn darts. But if you do have a set of lawn darts in your possession, please keep in mind that they're illegal and your kid could get hurt or, you know, damage or kill other children. So this is true, but you know, you could just be, could just be, you know, smart and not hit people with them. Yeah, but that, that (laughs) doesn't work out. (laughs) That's true. But a few episodes ago, we talked about different star toys or ones that were very popular for date for the for their uh, debut. And today, we're going to talk about one in particular. One in particular, but this toy really has stood the test of time. Hmm. I mean, it it is the exact same toy as it was back when it was invented in the early 1900s, with one exception. But we'll get to that later. One exception. Mm-hmm. What color? Yep. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, you know what? In the 1900s, you had to use your imagination for color. Yeah, I guess that's true. So, well, they didn't They didn't paint a lot of stuff. No, but just fun fact, um, Windsor chairs were painted chairs, and that is what they're traditionally are 
painted. That's what the antique ones, they'll be painted black or blue or whatever color. Mm -hmm. Because if you had paint, Mm -hmm. you could paint your chair chair, and that was a status symbol. Oh, yeah. So, you know, if you had a Windsor chair, which are beautiful chairs that also stood the test of time and are probably some of the most well-made chairs around. Mm -hmm. But if you had one and it was painted, that means you had a lot of money. Because other chairs are just regular wooden chairs and stuff. They would just stain them or they would be natural or whatever. And that was just because you didn't have enough money to paint. Oh, so, yeah. That fun makes fact. Sense. That makes sense. Yep. Cool. Side note, fun fact, rabbit hole. What is the toy we're talking about? Tinker Toys. Tinker Toys. Absolutely. That's a blast. Over 100 years old. Yeah. Yeah. They were actually uh, first made in 1914. Yep. Yeah. This guy named Charles H. Pajot. That's how I'm going to pronounce his name, and it may be wrong, but I like it. Yeah, that's true. It sounds nice. It sounds nice. I'm sure he would be okay with it, or he would correct you 80,000 times. Probably. Well, you know, I have one of those names that I have to correct a lot, so I get it. That's true. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, I love it. Yeah, well, that's good, because I mean, it's it's memorable. (laughs) It is memorable. That's true. Yeah. Not that you're not memorable all by yourself. Mm, that was sweet and uh, pandering. <laughs> pandering. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway. Anyways. So, Mr. Peugeot created... Tinker Toys. <laughs> the Tinker Toys um, in the 1900s. That's right. So. You know, uh, with the differing link sticks, the set was invented to be based on the Pythagorean progressive right triangle. Yeah, I don't know anybody that would get that from... Oh, actually, I probably do. I probably know a couple math... Actually, I know a few mathematicians well, that would who's, do that. Who's your your cousin that... Uh, worked, David Mel. David Mel. Well, David Mel would for sure get that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I don't really come from a great line of math people. No, but you have the one cousin who is a rocket scientist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that... Yeah, my cousin, he roomed with uh, my husband, or with your dad. That's right. Yep. Yeah, he would probably know it, and his brothers, but mm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. You know, uh, the sets the sets of Tinker Toys, actually, they were introduced to the public through displays in and around Chicago, which included Ferris wheels. But uh, people have made, made some really, really incredible things with Tinker Toys, including a tic-tac-toe playing computer. And for those of you that uh, think I'm lying, it's it's absolutely true. It's actually in the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But did you know what Mr. Peugeot did before he made Tinker Toys? Yeah. What yeah. did he do? He was a uh, stonemason. Well, he ran his father's monuments company. Oh. Yep. And he didn't like it. No. Oh, yeah. 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 He didn't like that. It, it apparently was boring, and um, I believe his exact words was, Monuments stink. <laughs> you know, that seems to be a hot topic right about now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Yeah, no, no, let's not. Yep, plenty of other people shedding light on ding-dongs. Well, huh. I don't need to do it. Yeah, that's fair enough. But he, di- he didn't like that. So in his spare time, he invented. You could say he tinkered. He tinkered. <laughs> That is right. <laughs> that is right. You know, and uh, tink, that uh, terminology actually came about because of this toy. It, it probably did. But you know what didn't roll for him? His bicycle invention. <laughs> <laughs> you you think you're very funny, huh? Well, you giggled. <laughs> I guess that's true. I there guess that's true. You know, Tinker Toys were actually inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame. Yep. Yeah, they were inducted in 1998, and they wrote this uh, really, really cool um, excerpt I wanted, I wanted to share with everybody. The stonemason Charles Peugeot and his partner Robert Pettit dreamed up the hey, thousand— Hold on. Did you say Pettit? Pettit. Because, see, that is my cousin's I last know. name. I know. Oh, my goodness. You could be related. We could be related. It's plausible. We it could is be. It is plausible. Maybe but, because I can say Pythagorean theorem, that makes us related. <laughs> I don't think that's a qualifier. <laughs> You don't know. I don't, but I don't think it's a qualifier. Yeah, probably not. But, you know, <laughs> I'm going to take that as a win in my column. Okay, fair enough. Well, I mean, if you're related to them, I'm related to them. So It's true. Yeah. <laughs> and they're smart guys and really great guys. Oh, yeah, very cool. They really are. 
Thousand Wonder Toy. That was, uh, the, the toy that Peugeot and Robert Pettit dreamed up. They called it, they called it the Thousand Wonder Toy. In the early 1910s, after watching children create endless abstract shapes with sticks, pencils, and old spools of thread, adding holes on all, all sides of a round wooden wheel size for sticks included in the set. They named their creation Tinker Toy. Shop owners successfully promoted their toy with elaborate store displays. Tinker Toy joined a host of other construction toys in the early 20th century, including Lincoln Logs and Erector Sets, helping kids to learn by exercising what we now think of as spatial intelligence. Or free play. Free play. Using your brain. Mm-hmm. Originally intended for younger boys, after 1919, Tinker Toys attracted budding engineers. Though the addition of an electric through the addition of an electric motor, the toys even came with instructions for creating elaborate mechanical tools such as printing presses, lathes, airplanes, and power saws. The post-war boom years in the 1950s proudly brought color to the classic wooden toy. PlaySchool acquired Tinker Toy in 1985 and redesigned the toy in 1992 in honor of its 80th anniversary. 1982, that's when I was born. That's right. Mm -hmm. I was there. I remember. No, I don't. No, you don't. (laughs) No longer the wooden rods and spools of old, the new version featured brightly colored plastic parts with each set designed to create particular objects. Now, the history of Charles Peugeot and Robert Pettit is actually an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them were budding professionals, like you said. You talked about Peugeot's employment employment or profession. Pettit was actually a guy who hit also a guy who hated his job. <laughs> yeah, he really? was Yeah. He was a he was a stockbroker. Wow. Mm-hmm. And in nineteen twenty nine was he a stockbroker? I can't imagine. He, he wasn't actually. No, he, he wasn't? was no, because they invented and started marketing the toy in nineteen fourteen. Huh? Oh yeah, well, yeah. So he wasn't. He a stock. was thinking ahead. He, he had. A <laughs> he got out at the right time. That stocks were gonna, you know, maybe fall and mm. go into a deep depression, like you know, nineteen twenty nine. Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. I don't think he had a clue, to be honest. Probably not. But <laughs> I was giving him something. You know. You know. I mean, I he did. Him a gift. He did have a good. He did get with a good guy, and they made an amazing thing. They did. They you did. Know? Yeah, they actually met on a commuter train. Yep. Going into Chicago. Into Chicago. Yeah, because yep. people met on trains back then and they formed a relationship. You know, it's, it's funny. <laughs> well, they were friendly back then. Yeah. Well, nowadays, if you talk to somebody on the commuter train, they're going to think you're weird and back off five feet. Yeah. The people are very, very skittish. A lot, most people do not want to be talked to in public anymore. Well, yeah, they don't. No. So they don't want to be talked to in public or like anything else. If you have a financial transaction with them, then they're happy to talk to you. Right. But other than that, just, hey, how are you doing? That doesn't happen up here in the Northeast. Yeah. Well, that doesn't happen. I mean, it, it does to it a degree. It does in Oklahoma. Yeah. It does to a degree in Oklahoma, but I'm saying no, even. No, no. Oklahoma, I can talk to anybody. <laughs> That's fair. And yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. That had pulled me away last time. There was a man at the Cracker Barrel. Mm-hmm. And he just, I said, hey, how are you doing? He said, fine, and told me all about it. <laughs> but you know what? I'd rather have that happen than somebody look at you like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe she said hello and smiled and was friendly. Yeah. Yeah, What does she true. want? That's true. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's dark kind of... thing lingers behind politeness. Well, that's kind of the thing. I mean, that's kind of the thing on like the metro going into DC is you don't have to, you don't know people on that metro. Well, you don't know people on that metro, but we get so many tourists. You can, yeah. you can always spot the tourists. Well, of course. You know, I mean, they, they're pretty easy. Everybody that lives anywhere that gets tourists knows how to spot tourists. Absolutely. Yeah. But the tourists are friendly generally. Generally, yes. You know, they, they're like, well, oh, they're looking, gosh. they're looking for places to go and yeah. they're looking for places to eat and. Well, and I have, I have tourists all the time in downtown Fredericksburg mm-hmm. that come in and, you know, into the antique shop and up and down because Fredericksburg is one of the things, not the only thing, but one of the things it's known for are its antiques. Mm-hmm. And the so, Civil War. Huh? And the Civil War. Well, yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. But. Well, and George Washington's birthplace right there, too. That was another thing. And Martha Washington. Yes. Yeah. And, of course, we have uh, one of the presidential libraries there in, in Fredericksburg. Anyway, mm-hmm. I have a lot of tourists that come in. And that they do. They want to talk to me. They want to see what, you know, what's what. Give me the inside scoop on where I could go and eat. Mm-hmm. And just that's the biggest one. Yeah. Where, where do the locals eat? Well, like, yeah. Huh, McDonald's? What's interesting? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now a lot of people eat at McDonald's at their own peril, but you know, 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I worked at McDonald's. Um, I wasn't. But there's fan. some great. You know, there are some great restaurants down there. And, oh yeah. And I, I will say, just maybe it's my age. I don't know. But I do hate that a lot of the restaurants and stuff down there are starting to become more chain. Yeah. And that's kind of, I mean, it's like, come well, they're, on. they're, they're not starting to become more chain. They're starting to modernize a little bit. Well, no, I mean, like the brew house that's across from us, that's a chain. There's more than one of the those. The public house. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. Some of those kind of chain restaurants are kind of trying to wiggle their way down in there. Or the other one is my absolute hate <laughs> of the taco bar. And do I really hate taco bar? No, I do not. I like tacos. I like all kinds of tacos. I think tacos are great. However, I do think if you're going to start a restaurant, could we maybe branch out and not do tacos? Yeah, but there's so many possibilities of tacos. There's so many possibilities of tacos, and all of those possibilities could be met in one restaurant. Why do we have to have 15 on the same block? Because they have 15 different types of tacos. You can go to those whatever place you want for a specific kind of taco. Well, guess what I do? I don't go to any of them. I go to the place that's creative. Well, I go to them because I like tacos. Well, I just go home and make a taco. Well, I can make a taco too. Well, oh, there you ooh, go. I may, I started making shrimp tacos. Now you can't eat fish, but I started making this um, cilantro lime sauce. Fantastic. We're we're way off topic. By the well, way. I know, but I used to make that cilantro lime sauce for mm-hmm. you with your shrimp. I remember. Even though I can't eat it, but you seem to like it. I did love it. Anyway. Anyway, if you're going to start another restaurant, please, please do something besides tacos or soup and tacos. At least soup and tacos was a little more creative because mm-hmm. they offer a whole different thing of food. But, oh, my gosh. Yeah, don't listen I, to her I think make more tacos. I think it's because tacos are so cheap to make. That's Well, that's so, why. And, there's, and like I said, there's so many different things you can do with tacos. Yeah. Well, there is. But, mm-hmm. you know, if if it's just cheap to make or whatever, then, you know. I'll just go to Wendy's. You know, it's Ooh, cheap. I'd much, I'd much rather have a nice taco. Or Sonic. Than go to Wendy's. Or Sonic. I mean, Sonic and, and Wendy's have their place. Just something else besides tacos. I mean, you know what? The taco guy, let him make it. Why don't you make something more exciting or, or, or equally exciting? Well, oh, people make different, the same thing it's different ways. It's all the ways. same. It's a tortilla it's not, stuff It's not all it. the same. It's not all the same. You're judging an entire category of food, saying every single taco in the world. You're judging an entire category of food. I will say we lived in San Antonio next Mm -hmm. door to our Mexican neighbors, and they were Mexican and very, very, very vocal about being Mexican and very proud of it. And that was great. However, one thing I did learn was menudo, not good to eat. Hmm. Number two, tacos and enchiladas, those are leftover foods. Yeah. So well, they make they 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 make the regular you know, no, regular I mean, dishes. I know, I know, but that's what they use it. That's that's why they make the tacos and the enchiladas because that's their left. Oh, okay, yeah, I've got leftover enchilada or leftover, uh, you know, chicken from the night before. Yeah, I'll throw it on a tortilla. Bam, done. Right, it's like so, making a sandwich for them. Yeah. Whoops. Yep. Ow. Aram's got all these things right in my face. Anyway, yeah, that was it. Anyway, let's moving on from the tacos. But if you could really please, you know, make something else. I don't, you know what would be really good if they what? could make like a chocolate bar. They have chocolate bars. Not in Fredericksburg. They used to have the fudge shop down there, and I'm sad that they're gone. I think she's they're next door. Are they still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, still that's there. right. That's right. That's right. Yep. Anyway, let's go back to our Tinker Toys. <laughs> back to Tinker Toys. In 1915, they took their toys to New- to the New York Toy Show because uh, – so before they partnered together to market Peugeot's toy idea, and they had a pretty rocky start. You might say it took a little tinkering huh? to get huh? them off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it took him all day to figure that one out. It folks. took me about three seconds to write that. Thank oh, you very much. Bless little. your heart, sweetie. Goodness. See? Uh, bless your heart. <laughs> In 1915, anyways, they took their toy. My jokes are unappreciated around here. Uh-huh. It took their toys to New York's toy show. It was the, the biggest toy show in New York at the time, and they fastened the sticks and spools into a plethora of really incredible designs like cars and Ferris wheels and different stuff like that. And they came in bolstering that their wonder toys, what they marketed it as, could be made into anything. 
thing. And after this, the sales took off and it became the household staple that it is today. Yep. Well, one of the things though that, that, uh, Peugeot, Peugeot, whatever. Peugeot. Peugeot. What was one of the things that he promised was that the Tinker Toy sets would hold the attention indefinitely, that they would never become tiresome and it will develop original, originality and application. And it is much appreciated by parents on this account. Hmm, that's a good marketing strategy. Well, if you can occupy a kid's time, but that was their, that was their, what drove them, oh, you know, sure. that was like their motto and that's what they strive to become. And frankly, they succeeded with Tinker Toys. Absolutely. And, and more on that when we come back. Hi, my name is Kaylin, and I'm the host of a new podcast called Tea Time Thoughts. Do you ever wish you could learn more about history, books, music, art, and culture, but you just don't know where to start? I totally feel your pain. Learning about all these things can be so overwhelming. Well, I want to change all of that for you. In my podcast, Tea Time Thoughts, I'll show you just how fun it all can be. In the time it takes to have a cup of tea, I'm going to teach you everything from the French Revolution to the Black Plague, Mozart to Broadway musicals, Da Vinci to Robert Frost, Ancient Egypt to Queen Elizabeth II, and more. You can stream Tea Time Thoughts wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. So what are you waiting for? Put the kettle on and listen to Tea Time Thoughts today. Man, I'm struggling today. You really are. <laughs> you do some kind of like tongue exercise. Maybe yeah, something nice like tube. that. We want to welcome you to our podcast, Hip and Humble, and we want to thank WGSNDB, the Going Solo Network, for putting us on, and also we want to thank our sponsors, Hip and Humble Antiques, LLC. Follow us on Instagram at hipn.humble, that's H-I-P-N dot humble on Instagram. Uh, we post all of our episode times and everything on there. Also, if you guys really like the show, go ahead and check out our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash hip and humble. We post all of our shows there first for all of our Patreon subscribers. So if you guys like what we do, please think about going there and contributing to what we do. Because we love it and we love having you here and we love listening or we love that you guys are listening. Also, we want your feedback. You know, whatever you guys want to listen to and uh, the, the stuff that you guys want us to hear, want to hear us talk about. We want you guys uh, all your input. So comment on it. Anything Absolutely. we have on our Facebook page, on our Instagram, anywhere you want, comment. And we do pay attention. We do. Mm -hmm. At least I do. Uh, I do. <laughs> Aram does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, before um, we get back into Tinker Toys, we have our unique find of the week. Unique find of the week. Well, I was – my middle son, Kale – we, uh, where were we at? We were, I don't know, somewhere in Virginia. Anyway, he kept telling me, Mom, Mom, you got to come see this antique place. It's great. You've got to come see this. And finally, I said, like, okay, let's go. So we went, and it was. It was great. They had a big O jar full of matchbooks. And I'm like, okay, I got to have it. Because used to, you could get matchbooks anywhere. I mean, like everywhere had matchbooks. So, and people collected them back then and they still collect them, but now you can't really find them too much, you know, because nobody really smokes anymore. So they're not in the hotel rooms and the restaurants and everywhere that you go. So found all these inside there. They had one matchbook. Well, they had a lot of matchbooks, a lot of matchbooks, a lot of matchbooks, but one of them that I really just just kind of made me remember was this matchbook from Sambo's. Sambo's Restaurant. The fun place for family food. So I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys have been out there and went to Sambo's way back when. But I remember Sambo's was awesome. Because we didn't have, the only drink that we had in our house when I was a kid was we had water, milk, which none of us drank. Um, <laughs> I was like to kind of wet your cereal was about it. But... That and tea. Mm -hmm. So anytime we wanted a Coke, that was a restaurant thing. Oh, and uh, Coke, for those of you that are not Southern, is uh, uh, is a, a – what is that? What it's Coke. It? Yeah, but – Oh, uh, it's a it's one word that describes all soft drinks. Yes, yeah. A covering term. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if you want a Coke or carbonated beverage <laughs> – A pop. Soda pop. Soda pop, Coke, whatever. If you want a Coke – uh, that was the only time we got it was at the restaurants. Right. So Sambo's was like a really big deal because I could get a Coke and I could get one refill. 
That is a big deal. That's a big deal because back then you didn't get free refills. Right. You got one Coke and that's it. Yeah. Can you imagine how much money those restaurants are raking in? Well, they still are. That's pretty well, much, yeah. yeah. But I also have found some other really neat matches in there at one from um, pan american world airways which is awesome yep yep can you imagine being on a plane while 50 people are sitting there smoking um i can i can imagine it because i was on the, the sub yeah well <laughs> but you know but it is different mm -hmm. they also had north central airlines so it was a lot of fun just kind of going back through some of these. They have, you know, there was another one that had like the rocket ship taken off and that's really cool. You know, commemorating, commem commemorating that um, space travel and you know, it was it was kind of it was kind of neat to see just stuff like that because even on matchbook covers, you know, people were excited with new innovations and what was going on and they would you know well, have I all mean, these that's pictures re reflected in the artwork, you know. Sure, sure. Yeah, because I mean, the, those were absolutely artwork well they were but i mean it it really just kind of reflects the time when the country book was more unified in a lot of ways you know people wanted were excited to see space travel and excited to see rocket ships and you know those were all new those were all fantasy at one point and now they're reality yeah and that was definitely a unifying force absolutely no i completely Ab agree absolutely but you know even in um you know i've been collecting uh sewing booklets mm -hmm. so some of the sewing booklets i got one the other day and um from uh, world war ii and it's the battleship iowa on the front of the sewing book uh -huh. so but they those were for wartime right so you know they always had all these just kind of fun little things in there wow but uh yeah i don't know matchbooks were really what were what i like today they even had the one on here and it i don't even know what store it was from but on the back of it has these two Country people with a cow in the middle, and it says kind of sloppy kissing because the cow is <laughs> trying to kiss the girl. That's gold. It was hilarious. I thought, that is hilarious. I was like, that that is funny. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that was the times. Oh, yeah. They just, they thought different, and it was, it's kind of funny because they, they thought different. So their stuff like this is kind of simple, and we kind of look at it and go, uh huh. But, we don't think of it today. We don't go simple today. Everybody's trying to be complicated. And yeah. I'm, you know, what's my shock value? Well, because, I mean, a lot of our culture has uh, devolved into, you know, what can you, what point can you get across in 180 characters? Sure, sure. I mean, we have, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have Instagram and all these things that but you're, but encourage you're you to so have. so oversaturated. Correct. But, which but, is funny because like you take one little picture from them, like this matchbook mm -hmm. with this funny little cow licking the girl and it says sloppy kissing. Everybody's going to laugh at it. Right. Absolutely. It's very simple and it's funny and you know, it's kind of an everyday life thing people can relate to. That's why like Jerry Seinfeld, mm -hmm. his show was so, you know, popular and stuff because it was about nothing. Yeah. It was just everyday life and, you know, weird stuff that happens when I go to the dry cleaners yeah. or pick up some soup or, you know, whatever. Well, because, it, because it's incredibly relatable. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because it, you don't you don't have to think very hard to think, oh, that could happen to me. Right, right. So, you know, it, there's not a lot of shock value in it. But I remember Jerry Seinfeld felt over shock value stuff. Like shock value kind of goes, oh. Right, you know, for five minutes and then it's, eh, whatever. Right, right. Well, and I think a lot of popular culture nowadays, and I know we're still way off topic, but yeah. but a lot of popular culture nowadays is has gone away from humor. Oh, definitely. You know, there, there's not a lot of really good humor anymore. No. I mean, there there are great comedians, and I'm, you know, I love comedy. I I, I listen to a, comedian, a lot of comedians' podcasts, and I listen to all of their... But, but can, you, can you find a comedian nowadays that doesn't cuss through the entire show because i don't think that's funny i there there are a couple and they are i mean funny. but it's but you know but most of them it's you know dropping the f-bomb here and there and blah 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 and it's like okay your story would have been so much more funny without all of that yeah i mean i i get you know, I, can I get you not that stand alone on without it i i get that perspective and and you know the the argument's been made both ways and I, i'm 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 not here to defend either way no no I just, you know, there's a lot of words in the English language. Let's try to expand and use more. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I'll I buy agree. I'll a dictionary. I don't mind. 
Well, a, a lot of comedy too is ha- is inflection and tone and sure and uh, physicality and a lot. There's a lot of things that uh, that go into it other than you know the words, which I I, I like. I said I, sure. I get I get both sides of the argument. I'm not here to push one way or the other. No, no. But I will say, as a general whole, my original point was this: that comedy movies and shows are they've kind of been on a down. I would say a down slope. You know, oh, they, there yeah, have been there have been definitely. much less of them than there are, you know, these crime dramas or um, just uh, tragedies. I guess you would say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. I mean, we it would be nice if we had more shows. Um, well, you know what I was telling one of somebody today. It's like, what show is going to replace the Big Bang Theory? <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, we had, like, Seinfeld. That was funny. Mm-hmm. Everybody can relate to it. You had Friends. Mm-hmm. Everybody can kind of relate to that. Mm-hmm. And now we have Big Bang. Mm-hmm. Everybody could kind of relate to that. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of scrutiny with the Big Bang Theory, basically saying, sure. uh, you know, they, they do put the laugh tracks and they, like, pause in there for you to laugh. They, they set well, it up. Well, they do and, that with everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah. There, there's no live shows anymore. Well, I, mean, I know, live. I know that, but I'm saying in order, like, to put that in there and suggest, oh, you need to laugh at this moment is kind of. They've done that forever. Yeah. I mean, really. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You know that that's nothing new. So I mean, that's. I guess you could argue whatever, but you'd have to go. I mean, even Bewitched <laughs> mm. had the same thing. Yeah. Andy Griffith show. But, yeah, you know, well, I think Mary that, Tyler Moore, all of them did. That. I think I think that's why it was scrutinized because it it has been done so many times. Yeah, well, let them come up with some comedy then. Yeah, don't put the laughs in. <laughs> that's fair. That's but, fair. Yeah. But you know, now it's kind of like, okay, what's going to be the next? Yeah, you know, I wish they would thing. bring back something like Whose Line Is It Anyway or Bewitched. Bring back Bewitched. <laughs> Bewitched is all right. Uh, what was um, Bewitched? The improv show. Whose line is it anyway? No, nah, not that one. Um, the Newlyweds game. The Newlyweds game is great, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to think of it at the moment. He's not going to think of it. No, but uh, but you see how Tinker Toys have inspired an entire conversation absolutely. that was just open ended, thoughtful. No, absolutely. It absolutely has because Tinker Toys in and of themselves inspire that imaginative creativity. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, um, you know, Piaget uh, had said that he wanted all of the toys that he created, he really did create kind of to be educational. Absolutely. So he wanted, wanted his toys to reflect his ideas about the importance of play and educating. Right. Everything he designed had that same philosophy towards education and imaginative creativity, just like we, what we've been saying. Um, yeah. Absolutely. You know, because obviously Tinker Toys weren't the last thing that he designed. Yeah. Well, you know, he built a lot of things, and for boys and girls, both. But one of his, uh, I don't know what they call the advertising ditty was, you know, I build a thousand wondrous things that teach both girl and boy I bring content and happiness. My name is Tinker Toy. Wow. I think that's great. That is fantastic. Well, not only is it fantastic as a toy and and his philosophy behind it, but it's a, it's a fantastic marketing tool. Because Absolutely. if you're if you're trying to sell a product uh, to parents because realistically with toys you're selling the product to parents. Oh, we just selling every product to parents. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the target that's the target audience and audience and to really do that you're going to need to show them that there there is inherent value in it. And I, th- I really do think Tinker Toys and all, all of the toys that uh, Peugeot invented do have inherent value. Because, Absolutely. Because of what they brought not only to kids but to society as a whole. Because, like you know, like we said, that this is – Tinker Toys is – is something that you know Tinker Toys were passed down from generation to generation all through that all through the 20th century. Oh yeah. You know yeah. that there's that level of nostalgia and also that um level of intrigue that really bridged the gap between generations. Oh yeah. You know. Well, you know, education really isn't that different. I mean, you teach math is math is math is math. You know, 2 plus 2 is always going to be 4. And that can be boring or that can be fun. 
And yeah. I think Tinker Toys kind of brings that around. You know, if mm-hmm. I've got two of these little round wheels, two of this, you know, what can I make from that? It, it makes it, uh, you can visualize. Right. It's tactical. It's visual. Absolutely. And that's a lot of kids learn that way. No, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person I learn, I learn by doing and using Tinker Toys or Lincoln Logs or a lot of these free play toys really allow you to mold things with your hands into, you know, whatever you can think of. I mean, a lot of times it's different cars or motorcycles for me, but it can be anything, anything. you know, building houses and. Well, you know, like I said, being an engineer, building a skyscraper, building build, a computer, know, printing press, Absolutely. all those things. And those were incredible things that were done with toys. Yeah. Well, the Tinker Toys are not limiting. Right. They're, they're only limited by your imagination. Right. That's and exactly that's right. A, you know, I would love to see that in every toy. Oh, for sure. Because, you know, kids are learning with these Tinker Toys and playing and experimenting and you know, cause and effect and, you know, numbering and all of these things, but it doesn't feel like you're doing school. Exactly. I mean, realistically, kids are learning every second of every day. Absolutely. They're, so, they're soaking up every piece of information. Oh, that, they're sponges. Yeah, they're soaking up every piece of information that Good comes their way. Good and bad. Yeah, yeah, both, every, everything that's around them, they're soaking up. Absolutely. And, so, and they don't have any problem repeating it. No, not at all, because they have uh, no uh, shame. Nope. Well, okay, <laughs> short little funny story about Aram. <laughs> when he was in preschool, he went to preschool, and my husband I was in the Air Force and flew a lot, so he was TDY quite a bit. And he would go out and come back, you know, TDY back and forth. And Aram said one time he came home, and I don't remember the kid's name, Johnny, and we'll call him Johnny. Sure. Anyway, he came home and said, Mom, Mom, you know, Johnny has a different dad that comes and stays with him whenever <laughs> his dad is, is um, deployed. And he goes, can we get one of those for when dad's gone? I was like, nope. Uh, nope, but I bet Johnny's mom's going to be keeping her mouth shut here soon. <laughs> so kids will repeat it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I uh, I, I, I didn't really understand the two daddies. No, well, you know what? You were in preschool. Yeah, yeah. So I don't really think a three- and four-year-old needs to understand all that. Yeah, probably not. You just looked at it like, hey, he's having a great time while his dad's gone. Why can't I get me a, you know, replacement dad for when mine's gone? Yeah, because dad's fun. You you can play and wrestle dad and you can you can pinch him and poke him and all kinds of stuff. You you know, I want another one of those because, yeah, our dad, our dad was, he was gone a lot, but. He was, well, but when he was home, he was home. When he was home, he was home, and he was dad. You know, he yep. he made time for us. He really he was a, he was a great dad. Yep. Yeah. And those of you, um, I think it's episode five. If you want to hear more from my dad, because he's a cool dude. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's a cool guy. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he is. He's a sweetheart. Yeah. Well, he thinks he's scary, but <laughs> <laughs> he thinks because he's a large man. Um, he always, you know, I'm intimidating and scary. And I'm like, you know what? It is hard to look at you being intimidating and scary when you got a three-year-old wrapped around your head. <laughs> it just, nothing about that says. Or his I'm tiny scared. dog uh, fetish. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> this man is six foot and almost four inches. And he carries around a... Um, a half Maltese, half Shih Tzu. Bichon Shih Tzu. A Bichon Shih Tzu. Teddy bear mix. All of eight pounds. Well, he's more than that now. He's probably closer to like oh my 12. Gosh. Oh, 12 pounds. 12 to 15. <sighs> what a huge, what yeah, a beast. A what a beast. Yeah, so yeah. basically carrying around the cat version of a dog <laughs> everywhere he goes. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Dog course, even showers with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, his thing, his, uh, his thing, he explained why he liked them one time and he said, well, you know, I like, I like little dogs because they think they're tough. They, they got that Napoleon complex. So they, they're he always. He likes little dogs because he wants a baby. He loves babies. <laughs> he, he wants grandbabies and this is the way that he gets it. He loves, he loves kids. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he's, he's 
great with kids. He teaches kids with the Royal Rangers. Yeah. I mean, he is really no, he's good fantastic. With kids. He he worked with the kindergartners. He worked with. I mean, he he coached our soccer teams he and all has kinds. So much patience. So so much patience. I don't. That is not my forte. Absolutely not. And and, and I'm just I'm you know I'm in awe of him every time he can walk into a class of. Five year, you know, twenty five year old boys, and and all of them walk out breathing. Yeah, they all walk out breathing, and they all walk out in a line behind him, like the Pied Piper. That's true. It's a little scary. Yeah, although I've started doing that now. My, I do miss my kindergartners. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, I, I I picked up that torch for our Royal Rangers group. Royal Rangers is great, and we are way off topic, but not really because Royal Rangers we do play all with, about play. We do play with Tinker Toys. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. We have a set That's of tinker cool. toys. Yeah, we have a set of tinker toys that the boys play with. So, even here in the the twenty first century in twenty twenty, well, I guess twenty nineteen would be the last time. Really, no, no, we were still in Royal Rangers before yeah. COVID. But anyways, they they still play with tinker toys, and uh, yeah, they're, they're they're absolutely great. I love those little guys. Um, but you know, it is amazing though that the tinker toys. It's been what over a hundred years now. Oh yeah, and they still sell. They still sell. Well, and they still inspire. They do. They still inspire and educate. Yeah. You know, it, it's and like, probably now even more because, well, not maybe even more, but you know, so many kids are sitting in front of a computer or you know some sort of square entertainment box all the time that you know these are this is like a whole new thing. Yeah. You know, sitting down and playing with the tinker toys and figuring it out and yeah. you know building just sitting, whatever sitting there tinkering. <laughs> okay, Arm. Oh, I had to get it in way one last time because yeah. we 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 are out of time. Out of time. Yeah. Well, I think this was fun. I enjoyed learning about the Tinker Toys. We do have a um, set of vintage Tinker Toys down at the shop in mm-hmm. Fredericksburg. Um, and they are on. they're awesome. Are yeah, they, they are. are they the colored ones? You know what? I didn't open the box or the tube of them because a lot of people don't. Want you to open them, you know. I'm, yeah, that's right. There's, I try to kind of keep things as I find them mm-hmm. as much as I can because some people, you know, want it unopened or you know, it just kind of depends on the person. Yeah. So, yeah. but I, I may have to. I mean, they have been opened at some point. There's right. no seal, but yeah, maybe I'll have to sneak down there and take a look and see if they're colored ones or not. Yeah. Also, if you guys are, if you're looking for a set of Tinker Toys and you want ours uh, and you're not in the area and you're not going to travel to the area soon, let, let us know. And, uh, you know, if you're really interested, we can put it up on Etsy for you. Yeah, that's true. So, Absolutely. But, uh, but we'll, we're going to definitely keep that one in the shop because, uh, that one's, that one's cool. Yeah, they are. They are really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I, I like them. Mm. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much for going on this journey with us. We we went on some tangents today, but I think they were fun. I think they were I think productive. They were fun. Tinker toy inspired tangents. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Well, we th- again, we just want to thank you guys so much for joining us, and uh, uh, we want to let you know that we appreciate you. Absolutely, we yeah. appreciate you, and it's this is a lot of fun to do. It is. So, but it is. we do appreciate you, and we really do like your feedback. Absolutely, because you know we love doing this. It's a lot of fun for us, but we don't we really want, we want to interact with you guys. Absolutely, and if you have something that you want us to talk about, we will do our best to try and stay on topic of whatever it is you want to talk about. Yeah, despite all my mom's, uh, I'm not going to promise anything, <laughs> but no. we will do our best to try. <laughs> That's my goal. That's ours. That's yeah. mine. mine as well. Well, we do we do as much as we can, right? That's all we can do. Yep. Yeah. So stay hip. And humble. Thanks. Bye. You're listening to WGSN DB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life.